In this analysis, we're going to look at rear crosses, what they should look like, what potential problems might look like, and uh, what might be causing these problems. Now, keep in mind, when I set this up to film this a while back, I knew that shock already had the tendencies to have these problems, so I, I knew I could create them. Um, so that is really why you'll see me probably reward everything. There's very little that I didn't reward in this session. And that when you're trying to test these things, your dog is telling you what they think the correct answer is. So at least while you're trying to collect data, I think it's a really good idea to go ahead and reward everything just in case there's something about the cue that you're giving. If, if there's anything confusing about it, then it's not really fair to withhold reward. So we're going to start with the first one, just to figure out us. And she's starting on my left side. I'm going to cross behind her once she commits and finish on the right. So there she commits to the jump. She's looking forward. She hasn't passed me yet, but she has chosen the jump. So I can already start to move towards her line. And you can see her head start to turn to the left. So she knows a rear cross is coming because I don't move into her line like that unless I'm going to do a rear cross. And so she knew which direction she was going before she took off and it was all good. So then this one, you can see I'm still on her, uh, she's still on my left side, but I'm much further away from the line. So here, I'm not planning to do a rear cross. I'm just planning to send her forward and stop and just use a hard D cell as the cue. So here you can see she's chosen the jump, so I stop moving, and she automatically turns a little bit. Uh, you can see her head start to turn to her left. So she misreads my position behind her as a rear cross cue. And um, that is one of the times where I don't reward her in, in this video, and I probably should have since I was doing things on purpose for the sake of the video. So here, I'm gonna show her what it looks like when I do want to rear cross. So there she is committed, and I'm moving in on her line. My chest is still facing the jump, but my legs are very clearly moving in on her, and you can see her head start to turn. So I just want to show her the contrast. This is when I want you to turn in the new direction. This is when I want you to turn in the same direction. Out most of the transitions to keep this video as short as possible with all the talking I'm going to do. Um, so now there's commitment. She commits to jumps really easily, really early, so I can give cues um, sooner and sooner. So she commits. I stop my forward motion a little bit later than before, actually, and I get the exact same thing. So she's still thinks that when I'm behind her, or if I stop abruptly, that she should be thinking about turning away from me like that. So that is a pretty common problem. And it's usually because the if we don't cross the line in time with the rear cross, it the dog starts to learn that, oh, when my handler falls behind, I should consider turning in the new direction. But I don't want... Uh, necessarily my dog to think that way. I want to be able to fall behind and still get her to turn in the original direction. So here I got it successfully. And I want to see why I'm a little bit more ahead of her. I don't, she doesn't pass me. And as she's passing me, I'm actually turning my front cross. So you can see there that um, my chest starts to turn away from the jump. So that could be a key answer in solving this problem, if you have it, that if you aren't turning your front cross in time, the dog is like, well, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. So I'm going to assume it's this other thing that usually happens when you fall behind me. Because there, when I turned and gave her the front cross information, it was a no brainer for her. 